In this tutorial, we're going to show you a basic example of how to set up your work area ready for importing vectors from another CAD drawing program. We're then going to walk you through the material setup, create a profile toolpath and show you how to utilize the 3D simulation of the toolpath preview to check everything looks okay before we go ahead and save the toolpaths out ready to run on the CNC. So first I'm just going to close this file, so I'm going to file and close and we're going to start by creating a new file to set up our work area. So just press this button here and this is the job setup form. Now the first option that we are given is to choose the job type and we're going to choose the single sided job and then underneath we get to set up the job size parameters. So I'm just going to choose a width of 8 inches, a height of 2 inches and if you press tab you can go down to the next one and it's going to choose a thickness of an eighth of an inch and we're going to be working in inches and the Z0 position which is where the tool is going to be measured from either off the material surface or the machine bed I'm going to choose for this example the material surface then we can choose the XY datum position this position is denoted in the 2D view by the red square down the bottom here and we get to choose either the bottom left, center and all the other positions around the work area and this is basically the start point of any of the toolpaths that we will be creating where the coordinates x0, y0 will be located. Now we can use this to our advantage whilst drawing as we can change the xy datum position to be in the center of our work area and this will help position any vectors that we are creating like any rectangles as we can position them from the x0, y0 which is at the center of the job which means we always know that what we are creating is perfectly in the center of our material. Now for this example we're going to be importing vectors so I'm just going to change the xy datum position to be in the lower left hand corner and once we've done that we can simply press OK to accept the job setup parameters like so. Now the first thing that we're going to be doing is importing a DXF file which is another file format which has been created in another CAD drawing program. Now how we import that is we go to the file operations section which is at the top of the drawing tab as you can see here and if we go to this option here this is the option to import vectors into the job. So all we need to do is simply click on this icon here this will then open up a open dialog form and then we can just simply navigate through our tutorials folders or wherever our in vectors that we wish to import into the job are and all we need to do is select them. Now in this instance we're going to navigate through our tutorials folders into the Wingspar files folder and we're going to import the wingspar.dxf. Now there are various other formats which we can import as you can see here but for this we're going to be importing a dxf. So with it selected just simply press open and I'll then import the vectors. Now as you can see at the moment you can see partially some of the vectors here. Now any vectors that we import into the software are always selected. So if we happen to come across a problem like this where the vectors have come in at a different coordinates to our job coordinates then we can simply come to the align selected objects tool and then align the selected objects to the center of the material like so. And we can just simply close that. Now the reason why the vectors were positioned away from our work area is all down to the coordinates of the vectors when they were saved and exported from the previous CAD drawing program. The XY0 position would have most likely been in the center of their work area, hence why we could only see the rear portion of the vectors when we imported them. Now sometimes you may not even see the vectors when we import other types of vectors which is why if you do come across this when importing it's always a good idea to recenter them into your work area and they should then become visible. Now in this example we're not planning on making any edits to the vectors that we've imported into the software we're just going to go ahead and create some toolpaths for them. So what we do is we just need to go over to the toolpaths tab. Now how we do this is we simply go up to this arrow here which is going to close the drawing tab and then it's going to open the toolpaths tab on the other side of the software as you'll see when I click this button now. So what that's done is that basically has closed the drawing tab on the left and it's opened the toolpaths tab on the right. Now we can simply go back to the drawing tab by clicking this arrow here or if we want to momentarily go back into the drawing tab we can just hover 
our mouse over the drawing tab on the left there like so and that will just automatically hide when we move our mouse away. Now the first thing that we need to do before we start creating any toolpaths is we should always check the material setup. Now we do have all the information available to us at the top of the toolpaths form indicated in this section here. So we have access to the rapid Z gaps, the Z zero position, the depth of the material, the home start position and the XY datum position. But it's always a good habit to actually go into the material setup form itself in case we do need to make any changes. So let's just check over the material thickness which is an eighth of an inch, that is correct. We want the XY datum position where the toolpath is going to start to be in the lower left hand corner. We're going to do the Z0 from the top of the block, the material surface. The rapid Z gap positions, the clearance and the plunge are both equal at 0.2 of an inch and the home start position is at X0, Y0 with the Z gap above material at an 0.8 of an inch. That is all OK, so we can simply press OK on that. Now, for our toolpath, we're going to be utilizing a profile toolpath. And we are basically going to want to cut out this vector and cut inside of these center vectors. Now, to do this, we want to be able to select all of the vectors that are going to be involved in this toolpath. Now, there are various ways that we can do this. We can go ahead and select the, in the vectors individually by going up to a vector and selecting it with the mouse. To add more vectors to the selection, we just simply hold the Shift key on the keyboard and go and select the other vectors. And we can click in the white space to deselect any vectors. Or if we want to deselect any vectors in the selection itself, all we need to do is whilst holding Shift is just click them again like so. Now another way we can select vectors is by dragging a box over all of the vectors that we want to uh, select. Now when doing this we just need to hold the left mouse button down and just drag the box and we need to make sure that we enclose all the vectors when we're dragging from left to right and that will then select the vectors. However, if we're going to drag a box from right to left we just need to partially go through any of the vectors in that selection and then you'll notice that just partially passing the box through all the vectors has now selected all those vectors. Now another way is simply by pressing Ctrl and A on the keyboard and that will also select all of the vectors. So once we've got all of the vectors selected we're just going to go ahead and find the profile toolpath. Now we'll find this under the toolpath operations and it is the first icon that we come to and you'll notice when we hover our mouse over it it will say profile toolpath. So just click into that and this will bring up the 2D profile toolpath. And the first options that it wants us to specify is the cutting depths. Now the start depth at the moment is 0, 0 and that will be the top of the material which is where we want to start the toolpath from. And then we have the cut depth which is the maximum depth of the cut for this toolpath. Now if we don't remember or we want a quick way to access the Z information, all we need to do is type the letter Z into these, this box and also then press the equal sign on the keyboard and that will bring up the Z value which the software is holding from the material setup. The next options are the choice to select a tool. So by pressing this button here we'll bring open the tool database and this will bring up a load of pre-created default tools and also any tools that you may have created as well. Now if you want to learn on how to create new tools or even edit new tools I will attach a tool database guide in the related video section in the tutorial browser. For this video we're just going to use an end mill of an eighth of an inch so all we need to do is select the title and just make sure that all the parameters are safe for our tooling and machine and then all we do is simply press OK. Now if we wanted to make an edit to those tool parameters but only for this job all we would need to do is use the edit button next to the select button and that will bring up all the parameters for the selected tool which is listed here and we can just edit those. So for this I may just want to slow down the spindle speed rate to around about 8000 RPM and I may also just want to slow the feed rate down to around about 80 inches per minute and I can just press OK on that and those will be the parameters 
that will be selected for this toolpath. Now we can check that by going into the edit box again and you'll see that all those parameters are saved. Next is to select the way we're going to machine the vectors. Now we have the option to machine outside the vectors, inside the vectors or on the vectors. Now when we want to cut out a part we want to make sure that we select to machine on the outside of the vectors so that we maintain any width and measurements that we've got in our vector drawings. Now you may be thinking if we're going to be cutting on the outside of these vectors we're also going to be cutting on the outside of these inner vectors which is not what we want. On these vectors we want to cut on the inside of all these inner vectors to cut out the center parts. Now the software is clever in the fact that if it sees any vectors that are nested within another vector it knows to cut those the opposite. So this vector being the outermost vector is going to be cut on the outside and these vectors on the inside of this outer vector are going to be cut on the inside. And if we had any more vectors on the inside of these vectors they would then be cut on the outside. So by having this feature we don't have to do two separate toolpaths choosing outside and inside for each of these different vectors. The software will automatically sort that out for us. Now the next options in our toolpath are to ramp plunge moves. Now what this does as the image details is this is our tool and basically rather than plunging straight into the material to the cut depth or pass depth of the tool we take a zigzag formation into the material. Now what this does is it relieves the pressure of the face that heads down into the material and this basically will just reduce the wear and tear of the tool. So we're just going to add the ramp plunge moves and we're going to do this over a distance of half an inch like so. Now the next option in our list is to add tabs to the toolpath. Now what these tabs are, are bits of material left on after cutting out the profile toolpath which will keep the part in place in the material block. Now why we want to do this is to stop the part being flung out when the stress from the tool cutting out the material comes too much and then basically the part will try and break away from the material block. And we would want to use this to prevent that from happening if we don't have any of the hold down methods, whether that be a vacuum table or some kind of clamp or strong sticky tape. So I'm just going to add tabs to this. So I'm just going to check the option there. And then we can just specify the length of the uh, tab itself. So I'm just going to specify 0.15. And then the thickness from the bottom of the material up, we're going to specify a tenth of an inch. Now to add tabs we simply click on the edit tabs button there and we can either add a constant number to all of the vectors or we can simply go around with our mouse and you'll notice when the icon of the mouse changes to a tick you can simply add in a tab there. So I may just want to add in four tabs to secure our part down. Now if we didn't like the position of any of these tabs we can simply go over and when the icon changes to an X within two angle brackets we can then just move that around like so and I'll just move that back in place. So once we've added in our tabs so simply press close and then all we need to do is just create a name for our toolpath. Now naming conventions are all up to yourselves. I like to tell me when I'm uh, creating toolpaths what the actual toolpath is for. So I'm going to put in profile cutout so I know that this is the toolpath which is going to cut out the part and I'm also going to denote the actual tool dimensions in the same name. So I'm going to put 0.125 EM for N mil, so I know exactly what tool I'm going to be using for this toolpath. Then all I need to do is press calculate. Now when we do this, this will automatically open the preview toolpath form as you can see and will automatically be taken from the 2D view into the 3D view. Now if we wanted to, we can easily switch between these by just clicking on them like so. And you'll notice that we have like a wireframe drawing and we also have a 3D block of material. Now that wireframe is drawn because we have the toolpath checked at the moment. If we had it unchecked, you'd notice that it disappears. Now what this wireframe is, this is actually the path the tool is going to take when actually running on the CNC. So these red lines that you can see are the tool in between the rapids from the start position which is XY0 here to the first plunge and if we just zoom in a little you'll see that we've got light blue which is 
the actual ramp that we specified into the cut. So you can see it zigzagging around the shape of the vector down. And then we also have these green lines as well, which are basically the tool plunging in and out of the material itself in between rapid moves. And the dark blue lines is the actual toolpath feed itself. Now you can also see where the tool moves up to actually give way for the toolpath tabs that we put in as well. So if we just put this back in Z, like so, we can actually go ahead and preview the toolpath. Now how we do that is we make sure that the toolpath is selected and we can use this option here to preview selected toolpath. Now we've got animate preview and draw tool selected at the moment, which means it's going to actually animate the tool cutting out the material for us. If that's not selected, it will just load and then you'll just see the actual material, what it would look like afterwards. So let's just preview that toolpath. And that is exactly the path that the toolpath would have taken if you ran it on the CNC. Now, the beauty of the toolpath preview is that we can actually utilize it to see any problems with the toolpath that we've created. Now, we're holding down the center bit of material because obviously we don't want that uh, flying out away from the material as we discussed. But we notice that we do have these bits of material that are actually loose from the actual part itself. Now, they, however little those pieces are, would actually cause us a problem. And it could be any number of problems. It could be the fact that these parts rip away from the part, which means we're going to end up with possible damage to our main part. We could end up with damage to our tool, as the part that gets loose ricochets in between the tool and the size of the part. We could also end up, if this part breaks free, it could end up being a projectile and causing someone an injury. So we don't want any of those to happen. So if we don't have anything that's going to be holding down these parts, it's always best to add tabs. So how we do that is we need to go back into the toolpath. And we can do that simply by double clicking on the toolpath's name in the toolpath list, like so. And that'll bring us straight back in to the toolpath which we created. And all we need to do is go into the edit tabs option here and simply just add in a couple of tabs on each side of these vectors, like so. Once we've done that, all we need to do is press close and then simply press calculate again. And if we reset the preview, you'll notice that now that we should have a toolpath which all the parts are held in place. So now that we're happy that we have toolpaths that visually have no errors and we've checked over the tooling to make sure that those tools are matching the tools that we have for our CNC, we can now start to think about saving out the toolpaths for our CNC machine. So how we do that is we simply close the preview toolpath form and we click on this icon here which is the save toolpath icon. So if we click that, that will bring open the save toolpath form and we want to first of all deselect the output all visible toolpath to one file as we have only created one toolpath and you'll notice that because that is selected that is the toolpath to be saved. So you'll see that it's given us the name of the toolpath that we've given it. And you'll also see it's given us the tool number that's specified in the tool database and also the name, so n mil of an eighth of an inch, like so. So once we've got that in the toolpath to be saved, all we need to do then is find our post processor. How we do that is we click on the drop down here and we find the one that's most appropriate for our machine or our control software. So I'm just going to go for G code. So I'm just going to find G code in inch, like so. And then all we need to do is just press save toolpath. And we can just give that a name. And if we're happy with that name, you just go ahead and press save. And if I go to save that again, you'll see that, that file is now there, like so. And that is what you would take to your control software to run on your CNC machine. Now, once we've created our toolpath and we're ready to run to the CNC, now the best thing to do would be to save our work. So you'd go to File and Save, and you'd give this a name. So I'm just going to call this Wing underscore Spa. And I'm just going to put underscore Getting Started, like so. And then I can just press Save. And it's always good to keep a copy of our work just in case we need to come back and make any edits to our work or toolpaths. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching.